Good morning, everyone. So today, I would like to share to you how I was able to develop the learning module in Rizal. Okay, so for the main topic is how to develop the learning module or how to develop a learning module. Our objectives are first, to determine the part of a module and second, develop their own module. Now the question is, why do we need to develop our own module? Now, since we are gearing towards the new normal, we need to have a blended learning. When you say blended learning, it's not only the instructors who manipulate the instructions, but also we need to give the responsibilities to our students. Also, another reason is that in the absence of updated reference book or a worksheet, module can be a replacement to a, a worksheet. Also, remember, in making a module, it is not like a condom that applies a one-size-fits-all principle. So when we say one-size-fits-all, for example, if your program is IT, all of your examples should be related to IT. If your program is maritime, all your examples should be related to maritime. Now, what are the parts of a module? First is the course title. When you say course title, it's the name of the course. Now, example, in this case, it's the life and works of Rizal. Now, be careful in putting the title of the course. Because at the end of the program, the stu our students may find it some problems in terms of checking the title of the course. Now, but of course, kasi, it's the subject when we were in high school. The course kinagamit siya kapag college. Program, the course is Rizal, and then the program is BSI. Now, the number of unit, use the indicative hours of CHED. When you say indicative hours of CHED, what's indicated on the syllabus of CHED? Now, pwede siyang bawasan, pwede siyang dagdagan. Kasi nga, sabi nila, it's only an indicative hours. If you're going to add hours, for example, in the case of Rizal, gawin natin siyang five hours, walang problema. Pero kapag, if you're going to lessen the number of hours of Rizal, gawin natin siyang two hours, pwede din, as long as we can justify, bakit natin siya binawasan. So the number of units. Now in this case, kasi nakalagay na siya dyan sa kanilang syllabus. So the life and works of Rizal, and then the number of units, it's three. So the next part is the course description. When you say course description, it orients the students by outlining the rationale of the course or the theme, framing a brief overview of the key content, knowledge, and skills to be learned and stating the major learning strategies and activities that students will experience. Now, in the case of Rizal, and na rin, nakalagay na rin ang course description. All we need to do is to copy and then paste. Next is the course outcomes. Pag sinabi ating course outcomes, these are more detailed and specific compared to program outcomes because they identify the unique knowledge and skills expected to be gained from the given course. So that's the course outcome. Now, for these examples, for this example of Jose Rizal, we have six course outcomes. Now remember, if you have six course outcomes, at the end of the program, dapat ma-assess natin yung anim na course outcomes. Followed by the course outlines. Now these are the topics to be covered for the whole course. Now in this case, instead of outline, in case na instead of gamitin natin ang topic 1, topic 2, uh, gawin natin siyang module 1, module 2, module 3. So it's the same. Papalitan lang natin, instead of Topic 1 is the Republic Act 1425, gawin natin Module 1, the Republic Act of 1425. Next is the, of course, is the content discussion. You need to discuss first the learning outcomes, followed by the 
the content discussion itself. When you say the learning outcomes, it is very different for the course outcomes. Kasi yung learning outcomes, kasagutin naman niya kung ano yung ating top specific specific topic. Okay? Pag course outcomes, sinasagot niya yung course itself. Pag learning outcomes, ang sinasagot niya is yung topic natin for that course. For example, module 1, Module 1, the Republic Act of 1425. So, gagawa natin siya ng learning outcomes. And explain the history of Rizal and its important provisions and critically assess the effectiveness of Rizal. Now, saan ba siya nakukuha? Nanggagaling lang siya sa nilalabas na syllabus ng CHET. So, sa left side niya, makita mo dyan yung kanyang learning outcomes. This one. Explain the history of Rizal. And then, critically assess the effectiveness of Rizal course. So the topics are Introduction to the Course and Republic Act of 1425. So very easy, kakapi lang natin kung ano yung nakasulat doon sa syllabus na nilalabas ng CHED. Now nakalagay sa kanya dyan, sample or suggested syllabi for the new general education core courses. When you say sample or suggested, pwede siyang palitan, pwede siyang baguhin. As long as, long as sinusunod lang natin yung kanilang suggested sample. Okay? Kung wala tayong syllabus, ang gagawin lang natin dyan, hanap lang tayo ng reference book, susundan lang natin yung reference book, meron na tayong syllabus. But I think lahat naman ng subject, o lahat naman ng courses, meron na syllabus galing sa CHED. Now, what if gusto nyo mag-insert ng mga instructional materials? At the end of every topic, author may insert or add instructional materials such as movie clips, videos, and the like. Ano po ba yung mga nilalagay natin na uh, mga samples na movie clips? Now, dito sa dulo na sa examples natin, nakalagay dyan additional learning materials. Watch the movie of Serizal. Then, attach as movie clip number 3. So, kapag naggawa tayo ng module, package na dapat dyan. Nandyan na lahat ng mga learning materials, nandyan lahat ng mga sasagutan, kompleto na. Pag, pag pinagay natin sa bata, padali niyang sundan. Then, of course, the last one is the assessment. Okay. In every module, there should be an assessment. And the assessment should be aligned to the learning outcomes. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Example, if the learning outcome says, explain the result flow, then how are we going to assess the learning outcome? Nakalagay sa kanya, explain the result flow. Of course, at the end of the topic, the student should be able to explain the result flow. Because that is your learning outcome. Okay? Now, may mga samples dito tayo pinubay para makita natin paano magkaroon ng alignment between the learning outcome and the assessment. For example, to demonstrate effective present presentational skills. And of course, should be a graded presentation. Now, paano siya ma-assess? Nagkakaroon, ka nagkakaroon ka ng presentation. What else? Nakalagay sa kanya to develop and identify an area for research in the discipline. Then, how are you going to assess? Nagkakaroon ka ng 1,000 word research proposal because ang nakalagay sa kanyang learning outcome ay develop and identify an area. So therefore, there should be a constructive alignment between the learning outcomes and your assessment. Doon tayo nagkakaproblema Kasi yung mga learning outcomes natin, medyo mahirap i-assess. Now, an example of, tignan natin yung example ng, ng chat. Nakalagay sa kanya, critically assess the effectiveness of result. How are we going to assess the learning outcome too? Critically assess the effectiveness of result. Uh, also, yung number one, explain the history of result. Paano nila ma-explain ang history of Rizal? Yan napakahaba ng Rizal. Now, balikan natin. <clears throat> Pwede ba natin baguhin yung course outcomes and the learning outcomes from CHET? Of course, yes. Pwede siyang palitan. As long as nakasunod siya dun sa pattern or dun sa binigay ng CHET. Kasi nga, kailangan natin measurable lahat ng learning outcomes at lahat ng course outcomes. Since nag-shift na tayo dun sa outcomes-based education. So meaning, ang tinitignan natin palagi is the outcome of the students. Okay? 
outcome ang binabasihan natin ng grades. E paano naman kung, for example, nagbigay tayo ng mga multiple choice sa, sa, sa exam natin? Okay lang di po yun. Walang problema mga magbigay tayo ng multiple choice kasi knowledge-based knowledge, knowledge based naman yan. Kailangan natin ituro pa rin yung foundation bago tayo mag-proceed doon sa medyo mas mataas. Okay? May tinatawag tayo mga higher order thinking skills. So, bago natin may turo yun, dapat nandun muna tayo sa foundation. Knowledge-based ang tawag doon. Na siguro other topic, other sessions, pag-aaralan natin how to develop a a, a very good uh, assessment and the learning outcomes. But for now, siguro sundan muna natin kung ano yung nakalagay doon mismo sa syllabi o sa syllabus ng CHED. So, para hindi tayo magka-problema. So, pag medyo na-master na natin ang konti, doon tayo mag-a-adjust pa unti-unti, i-develop natin yung ating module o yung ating syllabus na outcomes-based education na siya. Now, dito kasi makikita natin, yung pinakamatas is evaluation. Then, synthesis, followed by analysis. Ito yung mga higher order thinking skills natin. Judge, critic, defend, evaluate. But of course, uh, we need also to consider yung ating mga courses kasi may mga courses na hindi naman applicable yung mga uh, verb na ginagamit. But kung kaya natin i-integrate lahat ng matataas na verb in evaluation, siguro mas maganda yun. Now, for a recap, ano po ba yung mga parts ng module? Again, course title, the number of units, course description, the course outcome, the course title, content discussion, assessment, and lastly, the references. Now, lahat po ito, nakabase, dapat palagi sa binigay ng CHED. Okay? Nakaformat lang po tayo sa CHED. Nandiyan yung course title, the number of units, the course descriptions, then the course outcomes, the course outlines, and the learning outcomes. So, kompleto po yan. So, meaning yung module natin naka-base pa rin sa binigay ng chat. So, para during the chat audit or the chat monitoring, hindi tayo magkaroon ng problema. Bakit natin na iba yung kanilang binigay? But in the end, pwede naman natin galawin. Pwede natin siyang baguhin as long as we can justify bakit natin siya ginalaw or bakit natin siya binago. Okay? So, Balikan natin ulit yung ating learning objectives for today. Sabi niya, determine the parts of a module. So, nakapag-determine na tayo ng parts ng module. And of course, to develop our own module. So, hopefully, nasundan natin yung presentation para makapag-develop tayo ng ating learning module. Kung may tanong po kayo, pwede naman. Thank you.